Pinky, yes brain, our campaign to boycott Sabra Hummus is not going well, why, people see through it. They are starting to realize that, although it sounds impressive, it is not well supported by verifiable facts and would not accomplish anything, even if it was. Even the editorial board of the Daily Princetonian has written an article denouncing our campaign as overblown, given that they think our argument for the connection between Sabra Hummus and crimes against Palestinians is unsubstantiated, is that all? No pinky. They also think our campaign at Princeton for an alternative to Sabra Hummus is pointless, given that an alternative to Sabra Hummus, hummus manufactured by olives, is already sold in the university store, oh. So I guess this is it then. No pinky. This is not it. I have a plan, what is it brain, we should make a YouTube video portraying them as mindless pink bears that speak in monotones, I see. Yes. That would be best, pinky you are a monotone pink bear, oh. I'm sorry, anyway, portraying them as monotone pink bears will allow us to not engage with their argument in any meaningful way, yes. Let's portray their argument as consisting only of liking the taste of Sabra hummus. That way, we can make it seem like their greed for good tasting hummus is their only reason for disagreeing with us, Pinky you're a genius. And we should also portray them as being unwilling to support local businesses. We should portray them as not caring about providing locals with jobs. In order to say things like that, don't we need them to have made actual remarks expressing an intentional disregard for local businesses? No pinky. They don't have to say that they don't care about the local market. We can assume it, okay? So what next? Next, after discrediting them by portraying them as unfeeling, uncaring monotone pink bears, we should present our own argument. What's our argument brain? Our argument is that the money you spend on Sabra Hummus directly funds efforts to kick Palestinians out of their homes and steal their ancestral lands. Wait. Is Sabra Hummus paying people to go kick Palestinians off their lands and steal their homes? Well, no. But they give aid to the Golani Brigade. Doesn't the money people spend on Sabra Hummus go primarily to pay the employees and cover the company's costs? Yes. But some of it goes to the Golani Brigade. Wait. Doesn't the aid that goes to the Golani Brigade arrive only in the form of food care packages and money to individual soldiers for the purpose of funding their trips home to see their families? Yes. But because some Golani soldiers have committed war crimes, that means all Golani soldiers are evil war criminals. None of them deserve care packages. None of them deserve to go home to see their families on anyone's dime. If you don't want your money to go to the Golani Brigade in any form, couldn't you just personally not buy Sabra products? That's not enough. Why? Sabra deserves to be punished. Why? For associating in any way, shape, or form with the Golani Brigade. But don't they only support the Golani Brigade by providing moral support in the form of food and money strictly for unwealthy soldiers to travel home? The Golani Brigade commits war crimes. Don't we need to provide proof? We have proof. Individual Golani soldiers have committed war crimes, but haven't those soldiers been tried and convicted by Israeli courts who have sent them to jail? Doesn't that mean that the Golani soldiers who remain are probably normal soldiers? No. If individual Golani soldiers have committed war crimes, then all Golani soldiers have committed war crimes. It's simple logic. Oh, okay, no, not okay. We need to add more to our argument. How brain, let's call them homophobes in our YouTube video. Wouldn't that require them to have actually made homophobic remarks? No. We don't need to back up our portrayal of them with any real facts. While we are at it, in addition to calling them homophobes, we should say they hate people with hairy armpits. But I have hairy armpits, exactly. If you associate them with homophobia and people who hate hairy armpits, you will feel hated and oppressed and will not listen to their argument. Don't you think someone will notice that the majority of our argument is an ad hominem attack? I doubt it. Even if they do, we can just repeat our mantra. What's our mantra? That Sabra Hamas is evil. The Golani Brigade is evil. Israel is an apartheid state. Choosing to purchase products that aren't made locally is evil. But don't we have to back up these comments with verifiable facts? Haven't you listened to a word I said?
We don't have to support anything we say with facts. We can call Israel an apartheid state and people will believe us without investigating for themselves. We can call the Golani Brigade evil and people will believe us without investigating for themselves. We can claim that Sabra Hamas pays people to kick Palestinians off their lands and people will believe us without investigating for themselves. Aren't we alienating any people who support Palestinian rights but don't support the boycott because they think it's unsubstantiated and useless by portraying them as unthinking, monotone pink bears who don't care about Palestinians? No. It's impossible that anyone who supports Palestinian rights would not support the boycott on the grounds that it's unsubstantiated and useless. Oh, okay. So what are we doing tonight, Brain? Same thing we do every night, Pinky, spending our time trying to hype up a boycott that is unsubstantiated and would accomplish very little, even if it were, while ignoring alternatives that would actually promote Palestinian well-being and rights, such as campaigning to raise awareness and funding for the new Israel Fund, which fights for the equal treatment of Arabs and Bedouins within Israel, or campaigning to raise awareness of substantiated things that are going on, like the evictions in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan, or unequal water distribution in the West Bank. Cool. Come on Pinky, let's roll.